I'm right on it. You're it, Father Fish. Water. We're talking about what's in the water. Mm -hmm. I've been struggling with the difference between water and what's in water. Yeah. Because water is water is two gases that combine somehow to form something that's not a gas. <laughs> However well, in the world that happens. Hydrogen and oxygen can exist as a gas, as a liquid, and as a solid like anything else. Same as water itself can exist as a gas, a liquid, and a solid. So, you know, it's really just bonding of the atoms that creates a molecule of water. Is it then legitimate to distinguish, as I said, between water and what's in the water. Yeah, I think so. You know, for example, with the ammonia, let's say ammonia in your fish tank, I don't think the water is like per se bonded to the ammonia molecules. Okay. You know, for example, okay. the ammonia is separate from the water. Thus we can filter what's it out. In the water, can... What's in the water is not changing the water molecule to, to another compound. In theory, no, I wouldn't think so. I would not expect that that's happening on you know in your fish tank. Otherwise, you wouldn't have water in there. You would have something else entirely. Right, exactly. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what? But again, we... I'm speaking off the top of my head, not having you know like a, a major chemistry background. So this is important though because people change the water in their tank because they believe something is wrong with the water. I think, you know, they're thinking that you have to change the water in order to remove, you know, just using that example, ammonia, you right. know. Right, um, right. When we know that we can add floating plants and that gets rid of that ammonia. ammonia. So the issue is then to deal not with the water, yeah, but you with need what's to deal with the and everything else. <laughs> deal with what's in the water. Mm-hmm. While we're on that, mm -hmm. is is that comparable to nitrates in the nitrates? water? Nitrates? Hmm. Nitrates are um, NO3. That's so it's nitrogen and oxygen. So it's bonding oxygen. Mm -hmm. And it's soluble in water. So it can form a solution in water. So it's not bonding to the water, but it's able to form a solution. Right. It's not bonding to the water. It is mm -hmm. in the water. Yeah. So Stephen mm -hmm. the biologist... His laboratory researched specifically the levels at which nitrates had a negative impact on fish. They discovered that while there were some fish that were affected at a level of 450 ppm, it wasn't until it reached 500 ppm nitrate that there was any distinguishable effect on fish. Yeah. Now, they had to create that that 500 ppm in, uh, in, in a laboratory environment. It, mm -hmm. it, it, they're ostensibly, it cannot exist in a natural environment because it would be such an attractant to all forms of algae that the algae would expand when it hit the water and draw it out. Uh -huh. So it would prevent <laughs> it would prevent the build up to ever reach that level. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, so basically you almost couldn't get to that point. There was like a, almost a natural check in place. Yeah, exactly. So the issue of nitrate being a problem and you know, this has been taught for years to the point where everybody believes it. Everybody believes that nitrates are dangerous. Mm -hmm. And they're frankly not. Yeah, at least not under normal conditions. I mean, I would assume under some kind of bizarre conditions, maybe you could get nitrate level that would be too high. But the point is, you'd probably have to work at it. <laughs> yeah, probably if the temperature were 200 degrees or something. I mean, who at knows? which point you would have boiled fish anyhow. Right, exactly. Right. <laughs> the nitrates would be the least of your problems. Really. It's an example of a, I don't even know what to call it. It's something beyond false. It's, it's a myth. It's an it's, alternative it's kind of a... reality that's used to sell product. And I don't think it's that deliberate. 
I think it's simply that there has not been a real understanding of the nature of nitrates in order not to be able to be afraid of them. Yeah, I would say in a planted tank, I mean, based off of what you just said, I don't think you would have to worry about nitrates at all. The non-issue. Um, yeah. If anything, I mean, they're a nutrient for plants. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's the what more, actually... So the higher what, the uh, nitrate, the more plants can have in your tank. Mm -hmm. The more that's plants you can have in your tank, the more fish you can have in your tank. Uh-huh. I know nitrites can get to be a problem potentially, but I don't know what the condition. But, but even really yeah, is. that's true. But even mm -hmm. with nitrites, if nitrates are going up, it's because the nitrifying bacteria are not there in adequate quantity, which means mm -hmm. either there is a pH that's too low for the bacteria to be active, mm -hmm. or like just like six point zero or below. Or there's something rotten in the state of Denmark. I mean, mm -hmm. there's something decaying in the tank that's creating such a tremendous amount of ammonia that the bacteria are not keeping up with it. Are there organic material substances that occur or that develop, that mature, that are created in the water that are beneficial to the environment of fish and plants and microbiology. Does the tank, as it matures, if we think in terms of process, as it's changing and modifying continuously? If, if you were talking about, like if we're looking at that tank sitting next to you right now, I would expect and again, being more of a soil person than a water person by training, I would expect that there would be, like, for example, plant exudates in that water, for example, ah, like right. secondary metabolites and things similar to, like, if you think of um, soil as a substrate, you get those secondary metabolites basically that occur and leach out into the soil. I would expect that you also can think of water as kind of being a semi substrate. It's certainly a substrate if we're talking about, like, say, floating plants. It's a medium. You know, it's their substrate. Yeah, it's a medium. And so I would, I would expect that, yeah, there would be things like chemicals and stuff that the plants are producing that are getting out there into the, the water, for instance. Biological. Just and certainly chemicals Chemical, that are being yeah. produced by any um, fungi and, and bacteria in the water. One of the things that impressed me about the research that you guys are doing is, is when I discovered that plants release signals into the soil that yeah. cause the soil to create the very compound they need in order to do what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can influence, the, I mean, they influence everything around them. It's crazy. Let me just kind of pull this together. Yeah, yeah. The water contains the influence mm -hmm. of everything that's in it, of yeah. the plants, the fish, the dirt, the organics, the everything, the minerals, mm -hmm. all of it. To a greater or lesser degree, all of those things are soluble in one way or another in the water. By soluble, that simply means they're reduced to their smallest component in order to be able to remain in that in medium. Suspension, yeah, yeah, basically. In suspension, I mean, right. Yeah. In chemistry, solubility is the ability of a substance, the solute, to form a solution with another substance, the solvent. You know, water is a solvent. It's like the classic solvent. And, but it, you know, doesn't, you of, it does not change in it doesn't the, change no in the I mean, process not, of doing that of being yeah, a no. solvent. if that's the case then doesn't that mean that the older the water is the more it is in i don't want to use a value laden word here but yeah, it's yeah. kind of unavoidable in harmony with what's living in it i think that would be a good way of wording it 
I don't even know that it's intrinsic to the water itself, but you have so many beneficial things as well as, you know, like detrimental things in the water. Like people, when they change the water, they're looking to get rid of the detrimental solutes. Yeah, that are the, in- dirt, the dirt on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Or the urine from the fish or the dead but- leaves. But the problem is that when you change that, you're also getting rid of the beneficial solutes, the solutes that are beneficial to your system, as well as the um, the the detrimental sol- solutes. And, and like, the let's reality say, is that the, the detrim- excessive levels of nitrate, trite, or whatever. Yeah, the detrimental things are beneficial anyway. They yeah, simply yeah. they simply are at a stage in the process mm-hmm. of changing of their yeah. progressing through the biochemical system that's Mm -hmm. working in the tank yeah yeah it's not so much that they're detrimental it's that they're out of balance you know they're out of whack there's there's too much of it in the solvent or they're at a given stage in that process Mm -hmm. so when people are changing the water they're getting they're looking to get rid of undesirable solutes and what are they actually doing they're getting rid of both beneficial and the undesirable solutes. So they're removing... They're, they're literally throwing out the baby with the bathwater. Haha, uh-huh. okay. Right. Ah, there we go. Right, right. <laughs> they're, they're removing a fundamental component of that living environment. Mm-hmm. It's like grabbing a handful of plants and yeah. ripping them out. It'd be the yeah. same difference in a tank with aged water as taking a volume of that water out. Yeah. Same thing. Liken it to a garden. Mm -hmm. In in a garden, we don't throw things away. Yeah. We plow them under. If your garden soil isn't performing well, you don't, like, rip it out and put in new... Well, most people don't rip it out. You don't don't dig up your... Dig up your dirt, clean it, and put it back. (laughs) Yes. I mean, again, to get back to the whole water changing thing, I think people kind of forget that we are part of nature and that even in your own house, you're part of nature. Like your fish tank is still a part of nature, even though it's a glass box in your house. The water that you get from your tap that you ultimately are going to use in your fish tank, it's coming from a natural source. It's come up, you know, as groundwater or maybe it's been pulled from a river or something like that. And then it's basically everything you you take out and you put down the drain, (laughs) it's going to go out and get recycled ultimately and come throughout through someone else's tap, you know? Right, right. We're right. always part of the water cycle. That's you know? really excellent. The, the, <laughs> I can't tell you how many people have said to me, you can't keep you can't keep a natural tank. As though nature There's no other kind of tank, even as, what we're calling sterile tank. Right. Or as as though that nature sense. does not come through the front door. You know, again, water's a solvent. So what you have in your tank right now, the tank next to you, it's not just water, it's a solution of water plus everything you know, else. Everything else. Yeah. Uh, for mm-hmm. example, these plants, this plant right yeah. here is releasing compounds mm-hmm. and whatever else into the water that then is in the water mm-hmm. that's affecting everything else in the tank. And yeah. to take that water out is to reduce the ability of that plant to have the effect it needs to have. All right, I'm going to wrap it up here. We've been we've been at this for half an hour. I yeah, appreciate yeah. your time. We are delighted that you have chosen to get involved with the Fatherfish channel and watch his videos and participate on our Discord server. There is so much going on right now, it's impossible to cover it all. <clears throat> Do please find our web site. That's www.father.fish. Rather unique, and it is a very unique site. We've got lots of things over there uh, that, that you can purchase for your aquarium that are really quite wonderful. Join Discord, find out what's going on there, and be a part of it. Uh, we're writing a book. We're, we're evaluating these videos. The group over there is 
a substantial and important part of why suddenly this channel is becoming successful. So please join us, be a part of the show, and uh, we will celebrate your presence among us. Love you all. Bye for now.